is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Hadley Galleries are honored. Oh, hello, Hadley. Who posed for this picture? Wonderful, isn't it? Corbin's been remarkably successful the last four years. Yes, but who's the girl? Well, the same girl he always paints. He always? It is? This, this same girl? For the last five years, to my knowledge. But I know her. Uh, excuse me, John. I've seen her some. Good afternoon, Mr. Earl. Oh, hello, Joyce. New York Evening Globe, Drama Department. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I'll tell him. <coughs> you uh, won't have to review that play tonight, Mr. Earl. They've decided not to put it on. Oh, thank you, Joyce. Sinus trouble again? Hmm? No. Joyce. Did you ever see a face that disturbed you? Lots of them. That new man on the rewrite desk. No, no. I mean, somebody you know quite well, but just can't place. I had that experience this morning at the Hadley Art Galleries. Hadley Galleries? Well, Mr. Earl, you detest art galleries. I know I do. There are usually so many people one can't see the pictures, or so many pictures one can't see the people. How original. Was 50 years ago, and Oscar Wilde said it. Hadley's a friend of mine, and one makes sacrifices for one's friends. I was terribly bored until I saw a painting. Really a lovely picture of a girl I seem to know. Well, a dramatic critic meets so many women. No, no, this isn't an actress. Not even a bad actress. It's a girl I remember vividly. But who painted the picture? A man named Corbin. James Harlan Corbin. Perhaps he's in the phone book. Shall I look? Perhaps you'd better, otherwise the theater will suffer. <laughs> yes, this is Corbin speaking. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Corbin. My name is Earl, John Earl. I'm dramatic critic on the Globe. And I was wondering if you could tell me... Pardon me, I... I didn't get the name. John Earl. I saw that painting of yours at the Hadley Galleries. Beautiful thing, Corbin. I was wondering who modeled for it. The model? Yes. Who's the girl? I want to use one girl, Mr. Her name is Helen North. Helen North? Thanks. Sorry I bothered you, Corbin. It's all right, Mr.
Yes. Oh, pardon me. I'm looking for a young lady named Helen North. I'm Helen North. Oh, no, you can't be. I mean, you're not, you're not the girl in the picture. Oh, the painting at the Hadley Gallery? No, I'm not. Well, do you know where I can find that girl? You can't, I'm afraid. You see, there isn't any such girl. I model for Mr. Corbin, but the face is, well, an imaginary face. My dear young lady, that's utterly impossible. Well, if there is such a girl, I've never seen her. You haven't? Could it be an accidental resemblance? Well, sorry I disturbed you. Oh, that's all right, I'm sure. What kind of a wolf was that? He's no wolf. Painting reminded him of some girl. You know, Hunt, there is something strange about that face he paints. You mean she loved him and left him? I've often wondered about her. I wanted to ask him who she is. What do you care who she is? I don't, only... He what? You kind of like him, don't you? Let's not have that again. Okay, you're gonna quit your job. Oh, Hunt, please don't start that. Don't try to kid me. You're in love with Corbin. I... Please go. Then why do you stick to him? You've had lots of better offers. Where's your pride? Does it burn you up that he always paints another girl's face? If you weren't stuck on him, you'd quit. You've no right to talk to me like that. You'd do it just to hurt my feelings. I'd do it because... because I love you. And, uh, I had hopes of... Hunt. It means a lot to you. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll quit. Your favorite dish, bouillabaisse. I'm not very hungry. Oh, taste it. I remember when you were very fond of it. Yeah. That was in Paris. <laughs> it's horribly quiet here. Of course. Isn't that just why we took this house? James, you're upset. Has something happened? No, I'm just a bit jumpy, that's all. I wish you'd tell me. There isn't anything. I'm tired. I'm working too hard, I guess. Well, why don't you go to a show or a picture? Get around, talk to people. You wouldn't mind? Of course not. You shouldn't stay cooped up in this house all the time. Now don't wait up for me, do you hear? Ha! I'll be sound asleep. You'll be wide awake, I know. Good
another one, please. Your love, it may wander astray. My love, it will grow every day. Every Corbet. You have a droll sense of humor, I see. Mind if I sit down? So it's Corbin now. No longer Corbet. Strange I didn't recognize your voice on the telephone. I recognized yours, I'm sorry to say. Why New York? Why not England? Or South America? This is my mother's country. But you can't hide, my dear fellow. A painter can't lose himself with a change of names. The only thing to do is to stop painting. And especially stop painting Madeleine Renard. Strange I didn't recognize her. Earl, what do you want of me? I want her. I've completely forgotten your existence until half an hour ago. Seeing you again rather makes my blood boil. What there is of it. You made a fool of yourself writing those vicious articles about me. No, you made fools of us all, including the Paris police. Madeleine Renard was in love with you. You just completed a remarkable painting of her. The Madonna's secret, I think you called it. You were to have married her the next day, but she disappeared. Two days later, her body was fished out of the Seine. If she had waited and not jumped to conclusions, then... Please, Corbin, it's over, and you're in the clear. But I've always been curious about one thing. Why was Madeleine Renard murdered? What had she done? Earl, stay away from me. I quit Paris to avoid people like you. Tell me, nothing to fear now. Why was that beautiful girl murdered? Someone said it. Each man kills the thing he loves. Is that the reason? something about me that upset you. Heard something? No, I'm just going to quit, that's all. You must have a reason. No, I've been here too long. Now, wait a minute, Helen. I think I deserve some explanation. You've been with me now more than three years. I... I had no idea you weren't happy. Now, what is it? There's a wonderful painting at the Hadley Galleries. Everyone's talking about it. But it isn't Helen North, is it? No. These aren't Helen North either. Any of them. So that's it. Why do you always paint this woman, whoever she is? I have a face, too, and some people think it's a very nice face. Why don't you ever paint me? Am I just a body with arms and legs and no face? How do you think I feel posing day after day and seeing that other woman on your canvas? I have feelings, too, Mr. Corbin. I send you your check. you to stay. No. Don't go away, Helen. I didn't know. Forgive me. It isn't your fault. Yes, it is. I, I should have seen you before. Let me paint you. That's it. Let me capture that expression, that, that tear with a laugh in it. Good. Wonderful. I feel like I could kiss you. Why don't you? Is it my man? 
imagination, or are you more beautiful today? And to think I almost went away. Sometimes we are lucky enough to correct the mistake before it happens. Are you children going to have a bite? Oh, Mrs. Corbin. You haven't said how you like the picture. Oh, you're just looking for compliments, both of you. Mother, no sandwiches. This is an important moment, isn't it, Helen? It is for me. It calls for a celebration. Helen and I are going to have a wonderful dinner. And a beautiful boat ride on the Hudson. A boat ride? You don't know about my boat, do you? No, tell me. You'll see tonight. She's a beauty. And as fast as a bullet. James, don't frighten the girl. Perhaps she doesn't like to go so fast. Oh, but I do. I love it. Of course she does. So let's meet in the lobby of the Astor Hotel at 7 o'clock. We'll have dinner there. That will give the moon time to come out and be ready for us. Wear a coat, Helen. It gets quite cool on the water. Yes, I will. Well, I... I guess I'd better leave now. I want to look... I mean... Well, it'll take me a little time to get ready. Don't forget, 7 o'clock. At the Astor. Astor. After six, time to get dressed. I don't think I'll go. James, that isn't fair. She expects you. I know, but I'd rather not. Don't you feel well? If it isn't that, I... I'm a bit gloomy this evening. Nonsense. You go downstairs and get dressed. A girl doesn't mind when she's in love. And she's such a sweet girl, too. Come in. Hey, look at you. You could have let me know you were coming. Why? Got a date? Mm-hmm. Who with? I'm going out with Mr. Corbin. So he's finally got around to taking you out. Well, you're not going, understand? No. You can't stay away for a month and then just walk in here and... I said you're not going. Helen, I'm not going to step down for Corbin or any other man. I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Hunt, we're all wrong for each other. Only lately. We used to be okay. No, we were never okay. I know it now. Hello? Yes? Who? Miss North? Hold the line, please. I knew you were in love with when you didn't quit your job. What am I supposed to do, back away? Oh, no, you're not going to ease me out of the picture. Yes. Telephone, Miss North. Thank you, Mrs. Watson. You'll have to go now. I'm telling you, Helen, I'm not going to hold still for this. If you go out with Corbin tonight, I... Hello? Oh, hello. Yes. Yes, of course. I certainly will. Goodbye.
Been dead for hours. Case for the morgue. Tough. She was a beautiful girl. That's all you want to tell us? That's all I know. If I knew any more, I'd tell you. But the landlady says she heard you threaten her on the 18th. That was the night before last, the night she was killed. What about that? Not Helen. I didn't mean her. No? Who did you mean? Corbin. Corbin? Oh, yes, the man she worked for. What about Corbin? What about him? Come on, Mason. You're only hurting yourself. I was sore. She had a date with him, and I didn't want her to keep it. So I popped off. I'm always popping off. Anyway, this is just a lot of words. I wouldn't do anything to Helen, not All even All right, she... Mason. We'll have to hold you until we check your alibi. This Corbin, what do we know about him? McNally's bringing him in. Let me know when he gets here. Right. Look at this. Why, it's unbelievable. Another murder? That's right. And just like the other one. What other one? Joyce, I know who did it. This playwright, the one who... Uh... No, no, this chap's an artist. An artist? It murdered? Yes, that's exactly what he is. Quick, Joyce, get me the police. Lieutenant Roberts, come in. Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Corbin. Just around checking on a few things. Any new developments? We've released that boy, Mason. His alibi was airtight, and so far we haven't been able to locate uh, Let's talk in here. Good. Oh, how about going to your studio? I've never seen a real artist studio. Well, all right. So oh, this is it? Yes. You mind if I look around? Help yourself. I've been trying to check up on the phone call she got night before last. You say you phoned her about 7.30? Rather later than that, I'd say. Someone called her before 7. It was switchboard, the landlady thought. I, uh, I'd like to find out who it was. Well, that shouldn't be hard to trace. Oh, we'll find it, of course. I... This the girl? Yes. Corbin, you're pretty good. At painting, I mean. Certainly had what it takes. She's very beautiful. You painters get lots of breaks. These seem to be of some other girl. They are. Her name wouldn't happen to be Madeline Renard. Yes, that was her name. Where is she now? Dead. Didn't John Earl tell you? She was murdered. You were tried for it. And completely exonerated. And now Helen North is dead. Murdered in exactly the same way. Rather a coincidence, eh? More than a coincidence, Lieutenant. What does that mean? I seem to have an enemy. That's no defense. Oh, I'm being accused. What do you think? I've given you an alibi. Anything wrong with it? You beat that rap in Paris with an alibi, but not this one. I see. You have convicted me already. But you won't find it so easy in a court of law. Now be reasonable, Roberts. Why should I want to hurt Helen North? Does the autopsy show a motive? I think not. And would I kill Helen the way Madeleine Renard was murdered in Paris? That would be stupid, wouldn't it? Stupid or very clever. I see. You've come to arrest me. That's right. And this time, there'll be no miscarriage of justice. I promise you that. Justice. What do you care about justice? You're a policeman. All you want is a conviction. You don't care what you do to a man. What difference if he's innocent or guilty? Come on, let's go. Two crimes present a coincidence that cannot be ignored. 
Five years and 3,000 miles separate the murders of Helen North and Madeline Reynard, but... Oh, good morning, Mr. Lambert. I'm dictating that follow-up story on James Corbin. Throw it in the wastebasket. And I... What? Corbin's free, walking around. No. Released. Habeas corpus. No case against him. His alibi is as tight as a drum. Just forget the case, sir. Stick to the theater. That's your dish. Going out, Mr. Earl? Obviously. Well, don't forget to cover that play tonight. Cover it? I'll bury it. Robert, I just came from the Criterion Detective Agency. Yeah. Okay, Jerry, stick with him. Hold on to your hat. Mr. Corbin just hired a private detective agency to break the case. Who did? Corbin. Don't you get it? It's a phony. He knows we're tailing him. Oh, what a guy. Phony. That's the clincher. Now I know he's guilty. All right, Lee. Keep after that first phone call. That may be the answer. Right. Looking for something, mister? No. Not exactly. Thought maybe you might be interested in the body they pulled out. She sure was a beauty. Well, I am. I was wondering where she was thrown in. Well, I figure somewhere around that boathouse down there. What makes you think that? I know this river, mister. But you'd think the current would have drifted the body towards the Hudson River. It did. The tide changed and brought it back again. That always happens. I've pulled many a body out of this river in my time, but none as pretty as that gal. Can't think of any reason why a man would want to kill a good-looking woman like that. Can you? I say, can you, mister? What? No. Well, good night. Good night, mister. Randolph, of all people. Georgie Porgy. Where in the world have you been? Free, though. Earning another service strike. Free and on the prowl again, eh? Well, if I were a bit younger, <coughs> I'd propose to you. And if you were a bit older, I'd accept you. Seriously, George, I want to buy that picture. I thought you had a picture. I have lots of... Don't try to be cute, George. I want it. Send it to my home. Sorry. You can't have that one, Ella. You know, that painting I know all to about be... it. They have newspapers in Reno. It's painted by the man who, uh, who didn't kill the girl. Come on, make a big fat commission for yourself. Yes, and introduce you to the artist. What a romantic idea. You know, Ella, I've refused 20 offers for that picture, but if you're willing to meet the price... Can you think of a less expensive way to meet Corbin? Then again, he may not let you have the picture. You're not exactly a connoisseur. Of art, no. But I can be very persuasive. Go on, have him come over. Oh, all right. But when you see him, be a little tactful. <laughs> you know, he's not very happy about all this notoriety. No, I haven't seen him since... Uh, hello. Hello, James. Hadley. Why haven't I... Oh, now, don't, don't, don't talk like that. Oh, come on, snap out of it. James, listen. There's a lady in the office who wants to buy the picture. Tell him I'm a wealthy woman who collects, collects old masters. Young ones, too. The name is Randolph, Mrs. Joseph P. Randolph. This, of course, is the Venus de Milo. Bluff, isn't she? That's probably Corbin. Ah, James, come in. Hello, Harley. Mrs. Randolph, this is Mr. Corbin. Mr. Corbin. A pleasure, Mrs. Randolph. I'm quite interested in your painting. Yes, so Hadley told me. Well, uh, I'll be back in a moment. George is so obvious. Allow me. Thank you. Shall we discuss your painting? If you like. I'd like to buy it. I wonder why. 
Why? I never ask myself that question, Mr. Corbin. I never try to analyze an impulse. If I did, I'd be ashamed of half the things I do. Oh, charming. Thank you. In any case, I never try to make excuses for anything. What an attractive point of view. Are you uh, interested in art, Mrs. Randolph? No, not really. Just people. Then it's uh, not a painting, actually. It's the notoriety that goes with it. Publicity sounds so much nicer. Well, whatever the word, you like to be able to say, Corbin, who I know him quite well, he painted this picture, and point to it and wait for the reaction. Do you object to that? Well, I had something else in mind when I painted it. But you did hope to sell it. Yes, for its own sake. Mr. Corbin, you're being naive. This publicity has created a demand for your work, a demand which otherwise might never have come. Why not take advantage of it? Then, at least, I'm a commercial success. Was that what you meant to say? A commercial success is better than no success at all. You're very practical, Mrs. Randolph. By practical, you mean cynical. I'm neither. I'm merely being sensible. Too bad I'm not. If I sell my painting, it will be to someone who appreciates what went into it. I'm sorry to have wasted your time. Goodbye. Going so soon, James? I phone you tomorrow. What happened? I'm sorry, but you just lost a commission. Oh, too bad. He seems to be rather particular about who buys his pictures. Was, uh, was he rude? Quite. But I rather enjoyed it. I may even ask for an encore. On second thought, maybe I'd better quit while I'm even. Oh. Murder, my dear Roberts, is an art with James Corbin. He's not the ordinary type of killer that you can trap with clues or evidence. It goes far deeper than that. Corbin kills for inspiration. Why, his very genius depends upon the taking of human life. I can see myself trying to explain that to a jury. Why did he kill Madeline Renard? Simply to etch a beautiful face into his memory. Very interesting. Well, I'm going to be running off. Just a moment. It was the same with Helen North. The time came when Madeline could no longer be used. He hit the jackpot with that painting of hers at the Hadley Galleries. So he needed a new inspirational stimulus. Get it? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Earl. I've got to have something more concrete. What would you say if I told you I'm putting a spy into Corbin's house? A spy? What sort of a spy? Go on. Tell me. You probably don't know it, but Helen North had a sister. Well, I do know it. She's doing a play abroad. She was. She's home now. Got back yesterday. Young Mason brought her to me. We worked out a little plan. Oh. Is there something you wanted? Are you Mr. Corbin? Yes. The agency sent me over. Agency? The model agency. They thought you might want a girl and... Oh, I see. Did they tell you what happened to my last model? Yes. And you're not frightened? I need the work, Mr. Corbin. You're very brave, Miss... Uh... Morgan. Linda Morgan. Well, unfortunately, a model needs other qualifications besides courage. I'm sure I can please you. I've worked for some of the best in town. You can phone the agency I or... prefer to judge for myself. That's the best way, of course. I well, suppose you drop around tomorrow morning. I hadn't intended to do much work for a month or so, but you're something of an inspiration. Besides, I like your nerve. Thank you. About ten? Yes, ten will be all right, Miss Morgan. Oh, uh, Linda, I think you said. That's right, Linda. You'll find the dress on the chair, Miss Morgan. Thank you.
need him later. Suppose you get into that dress. Might is rather bad this morning, but for blocking in, it won't matter. You can change in here. Like it? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's Helen North. Yes, sir. I know. It's the best thing I've ever done. I shall keep it here in my studio. Always. Belongs with Marlene and... What's the matter? Nothing. Tell me what you want me to do. Sit down here. nothing. Corbin is a strange man, a creature of moods. Stands for long moments looking at Helen's picture. Then he puts his hand over his eyes as if to blot out some terrible memory. I know what that memory is. Then he wanders over to his little piano and starts to play. Strange, weird music. I think he improvises. For I never heard the melodies before. But I know what the music means. He's trying to drown out the memory of her voice. I hate him with all the force of my being. Eleventh day. Why do you stare at me? Oh, I'm sorry. Every time I look up, I find you staring at me. Why? No reason. I was just thinking. I can't work while you sit there and glare. Look! The whole day wait. Well, I don't see. Of course you don't. How could you? But it looks wonderful. Well, it isn't. It's wrong. It's utterly wrong and I... Oh, please, Mr. Corbin. You're just upset today. It's really... What, what qualifies you to give an opinion? You know nothing about painting. When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. That's all. I can't work today. You may go. Go on. I mean it. Go home. This man is helpless, beaten. His rage is only a defense. His moods change so quickly. After what happened yesterday, he phoned today and invited me to his birthday party. Should I go? Sometimes, I feel like a traitor to Helen. James, I know that tune. You should. I used to play it enough. Remember the night we first heard it? <laughs> that crazy entertainer, the cher ami? Assoiffé, petit papillon. Oh, no, not French. I don't understand it. Well, there is an English translation. It's about a butterfly sitting on the rim of a glass of wine. 
a still little butterfly drink with me and drink as I freely welcome to my cup you may help me to drink it up not like humans such as we nothing ever troubles thee gather nectar white steam may life is short and slips away mother you're not drinking oh jane no i've had three glasses already oh one more won't hurt <sighs> And Linda? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. Now you're lagging behind. Here. Yes, sir. Now let me give a toast. To the best of sons, my James. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> thank you. Now, Mother, sit down, huh? Oh, no, no. I've had enough, and I'm, I'm going upstairs. Good night, Mother. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Corbin. <laughs> she's wonderful. Well, she's my mother. <laughs> now. No, thanks. What shall we do with the rest of the evening? Have you anything planned? No. It's too late for a show. You're fond of dancing? It's your birthday. Suppose we just let things work themselves out, huh? That might be fun. The sky's clear and there is no wind. I'll get my keys. What? Nights like this were made for thrills and excitement. John Alls residence. Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Morgan. Hello, Ling. Is Mr. Earl there? No, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Alls not home, thank you. Ling, listen to me. Tell Mr. Earl I'm going out with Mr. Corbin. I think... That's nice, Mr. Morgan. Have a good time. No, listen, Ling. Listen to me. Ready? All ready. What are you thinking about? The stars. I like the stars. They seem friendly. They are. The moon is for lovers, but the stars belong to lonely people. Are you lonely? Aren't you? But you wouldn't say so if you were. There's nothing I wouldn't tell the right person. That tells me there is no right person. There will be, someday. And when he comes along, what, what will you tell him? Oh, everything. My hopes, my plans, my dreams. No, not your dreams, Linda. Your hopes and plans, perhaps. But tell me, what do you ask of life? Just average things. Someone to love. A home, and children. This bright person, I, I wonder why he hasn't happened along. Perhaps he has. We may have passed each other without knowing. Rather a tragic mistake, don't you think? I suppose half the world makes this mistake and suffers because of it. That's a gloomy thought. Oh, I have lots of them. But mistakes come so easy to most of us. And after the first one... I... I'd like a cigarette, please. Oh, I'm sorry. How much like Helen you look. Helen? Was she ever out here with you? The coloring isn't the same, but... The eyes, the, the 
contour of the face, the line of your shoulders and neck. So, the little gun again. Please, I... Could this save you if... So, now you're quite unprotected. Don't you think I know your Helen sister? What you want to know, ask me. I tell you, I don't skulk around like a cheap detective. through the night, with the throttle wide open. A sense of terror. Knowledge, the next moment, may be my last. But then, perhaps you're afraid to die. Isn't everyone? Why, well, I fear the inevitable. Here. Go on, drink up. You hate me, don't you? Helen was here, with you. She loved you. Why did you... Go on, what was it? Ask me. This is Ella Randolph. Remember me? Oh, yes, Mrs. Randolph. No man could forget you. I've been waiting for you to call and apologize for leaving me high and dry that day at Hadley. Well, am I forgiven? That isn't much of an apology, but something tells me it's the best I'll get. How would you like some stimulating companionship? Suppose we meet somewhere this evening and uh, cheer each other up. Well, I don't go out much, but... Uh... Well, there is a little place on Parry Street here in the village. It's uh, called Shador. Shador? Doesn't that mean uh, golden cat? How appropriate. <laughs> Never mind. I'll find it. I'll meet you there at nine. Goodbye. A vous santé. A la route. I'm beginning to like this place, James. Do you mind if I call you James? I'll be delighted. And you shall call me Ella. Ella? I have a wonderful idea, James. I'm going to let you uh, immortalize me on canvas. On canvas? No, I think not. I have uh, stopped painting for a while. I don't know, I'm a bit off my stride. I seem to have lost something. Your self-confidence, perhaps? Possibly. That's bad. Artistic work requires ego. And uh, you think my ego needs stimulating? <laughs> James, we are but fish in the wildest of oceans. We must either eat or be eaten. Right now, you're being eaten. The thing that makes you tick is being destroyed. What wisdom. 
from such pretty lips. Will you paint them? Trapped. As the chap on the radio says, uh, shall we dance? Wild horses couldn't restrain me. <laughs> What shall I represent? Well, how do you feel about yourself? Oh, you couldn't paint me like that. <laughs> or could you? <laughs> oh, Linda, this is Mrs. Randolph. Mrs. Randolph, Linda Morgan. How do you do, Miss Morgan? Aren't we working today? No, we'll drop things for a while. He's starting to work on me. Oh. Shall I report tomorrow? Yes, drop in every morning. You haven't lost your job. Sweet little thing, isn't she? Linda? Yes. Been with you very long? Oh, quite a while. Something tells me I smell smoke. Oh, hello, Linda. Hello. Anything new? No. They're upstairs. Another dress, another pose, another mood. He can't work. Oh, that's a shame. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, good of you to drop around, Linda. Hello, Linda. Mother, I have to run over to the supply house to get some paints. I'll be back in ten minutes. Maybe he's going to work. No. And if he does, it won't be good. Mrs. Corbin, let me go upstairs. Why, dear? I want to talk to her. Hello. Oh, excuse me. Come in. Don't try to act surprised. You knew I was here. No matter what I pay for stockings, they still hang like drapes. Go on, I'm waiting. Well, what's on your mind? Oh, I guess it isn't anything, really. Oh, now, don't tell me you climbed two flights of stairs for nothing. Nothing you'd understand. Oh, our little kitten has claws. Linda, dear. You must learn to take it on the chin. His work, his talent, mean nothing to you. Perhaps not. But he does. Enough so that I'm going to marry him. Linda, don't let it break you up. There are other men. Your kind. You'll meet some nice young man. Well, everything else has happened to him. Why not this? Congratulations. You needing help, huh? Thank you, Stephen. I got a little ahead of myself today. Anticipated a bit. You can set matters straight with just one word. Sounds easy. What's the word? Yes. Yes? I took the liberty of telling someone that we were getting married. I suppose I should have told you first, in as much as you're an interested party. James, don't you understand? I'm proposing to you. Yes. So I gather. Well, then, swallow your drink and sweep me into your arms. 
What is it? Aren't you pleased with the prospect? Flattered, of course. You are? How odd. James, you're the fellow. Is this the girl who laughed at love? And now she's ready to cry. Not for us, Ella. Too many things wrong. Name one. Me. Oh, should I say I? No. I should say I. So I don't fit into the picture, is that it? You are spoiling a perfectly good evening. I'm not the type. I lack the artistic sense, the sublime appreciation. Listen to me, James. I know my weaknesses. I don't pretend to be all things to all men. But I love you. I've never said that before. I've heard it a thousand times, but I've never said it. I've got you bad. Let's talk about it some other time. No. This is it. Either I win right now or go broke. I planned some excitement for tonight. Should I cancel it? As easy as that, huh? You know very well I have my work. Sooner or later, I must go back to it. Yes, and to Linda. I'm not a fool, you know. Then stop acting like one. No, wait. That excitement you spoke of, it might do us both good. The trouble is, we're both stone cold sober. A few drinks and the whole world will be all right again. If it must be like that, there can be no other way. I know where we'll go. Shadow. Better give me that wheel. <laughs> good old Shadow. That's where it all began. Let's end it. That's the artistic touch, James. <laughs> Romantic, too. Careful. Put yourself Ella. <laughs> I adore artistic things, James. Tell the truth. Would Linda have thought of Shador? Stop talking about Linda. Sweet little Linda. Go wind up with her, James. You'll get married and have lots of old paintings running around the house. <laughs> Will you shut up? James, what happened? What happened? Sorry. Let you find your own way home. James, never leave a lady in distress. I'm not. change of heart. Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, I shall. I'll start right away.
Dr. Lane. some things, things too fearful to remember. That has happened to me. Oh, no. It was only a dream. A dream? No, dear. We spoke of dreams that night on the river. This was something more. It was an echo of reality. You're accepting something as real that... I'm accepting the only possible answer. Oh, Mr. Corbin, please try to... No, no. The world hasn't come to an end. My world has. Linda. Thanks, dear. But, listen. I want you to go away. I know. You won't be needing me now that, now that you're getting married. Married? The wife can model for you. She measures up pretty well, I guess. Linda, I was with Mrs. Randolph last night for the last time. But please understand, dear. You must go away. Staying won't help either of us. I, I wish it could. I, I wish there was a path through this jungle. Because I, I... Oh, please say it, James. At least let me hear you say it just once. Sorry to interrupt, folks. Matter of duty, you understand. I don't remember inviting you. Good afternoon, Miss North. Looking for Mrs. Randolph. Well, you know where she lives. You were with her last night. Where is she? Well, I don't know. No? Well, then try a couple of guesses. Come on, come on, Corbin. What about it? Give us one of your very best alibis. Has something happened? Ask him. Maybe you'd better tell it to the district attorney. Come on, let's go. But what has he done? Mrs. Randolph is missing. Her car was found abandoned on Mott Avenue. All right, Corbin. Well, give me time to change. You'll have to do that downtown. We're getting your stuff. Bring them on. Don't try to bluff me, Corbin. We found the body. The crime is an exact duplication of the others. What's the use of being stupid? Corbin, the district attorney, is trying to give you a break. He's got all the evidence he needs. Come on, why don't you tell us? I don't know. Perhaps I did it. I... I don't know. I wish I did. Stop putting on an act. There must be moments that... that are lost to me. Moments I... I don't remember. 
That's all I can tell you. That's all we've been able to get from him since yesterday. I was up half the night. All right, take him away. Robert, you wait. Keep him outside. I've got a way to break him down. Wait a minute. Don't take him back yet. DA may want to talk to him again. Yes, sir. Miss North, this is the district attorney. Miss North, thanks for coming down. You may be able to help us. Make things easier all around. What do you want me to do? Sit down. First, let me say that I know what a great tragedy this is to Mrs. Corbin and you. In a sense, it's a tragedy to society. But there's no doubt that Mr. Corbin is a great artist. But history has demonstrated that genius is often brutal, selfish, and cruel. We've learned to accept that as a fact. There's no doubt that Mr. Corbin is guilty of this crime, perhaps other crimes. Still, he refuses to confess. I see. You want me to persuade him to confess? For his own sake, Miss North, yes. Confessions sometimes help. Otherwise, I'm sorry. I don't think I need tell you what the result will be. Very well. I'll talk to him. Fine. Bring Coburn in. Oh, no, please. I must see him alone. I'm sorry. I can't allow that. Only his attorney. Corbin, I brought your mother and Miss North down here to... Mother. James, they want you to confess. But don't do it, James. Don't do it. You're not sure you said so. Before you say anything, be sure, James. Be sure. Thanks a lot, Miss North. You're a great help. Corbin, don't be a fool. You can't win. Don't let her... What? Yes? Wonderful. That does it. You missed something, Roberts. Like all the rest, you made one mistake. See this? It's going to convict you. A little piece of fur, torn from Ella Randolph's evening wrap. Where was it found? In your boathouse. A nail caught in the wrap and tore it, and you threw the body into the water. You're clever, Corbin. But this time you fell on your face. You better come clean while there's still time. Joe, take this down. I told you I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure of anything. All right, Roberts, get him out of here. Thanks, dear. Don't give up, James. I'll fight for you. I'll never stop. Because I believe in you. I love you, James. I love you. All right, Corbin. Let's go. quiet here. No detectives, no reporters, no one to ask us a million questions. I'm about ready to drop. I have a blinding headache besides. Oh, poor child. You're just about sick, that's the trouble. Stretch right out on the couch and rest. There. Just relax. Will the light bother you? I'll make some tea. I know what headaches are, my dear. I, I had them myself sometimes, and they almost drive me mad. When James... Oh, the tea.
piece of fur torn from Ella Randolph's evening wrap. Where was it found? In your boathouse. A nail caught in the wrap and tore it, and you threw the body into the water. Don't give up, Jane. I'll fight for you. I'll never stop. Because I believe in you. Linda! Linda! Guards! Please get Roberts! Guards! Now lie down again. Oh, I'm all right. Oh, no. No, you're not. Now, I know about headaches. You're prettier than the others. Oh, I feel so sleepy. Good. You'll be asleep in a moment. Oh, but I don't want to go to sleep. I... Oh, my arms, I can't lift them. They're so numb. Don't try to fight, dear. It's useless. You're going to sleep. No. No. Dear, you must go, just like the others. Madeline. Helen. Ella. Famous for me. Why should you take him away from me? What do you know about love? My kind of love. Don't do it. You'll save him. Don't you see, Linda? You're protecting him, just as I protected him all these years. James, help me. How wonderful. Another girl. And he's locked up behind bars. He couldn't do it. No one could accuse him of this. Don't make another move or I'll shoot. Break that door down. She's still alive. Call the ambulance and get Robert. the girl. I sent her to the hospital. How is she? She'll be all right. Mother. How about her? Hasn't got a change. Mother. Jane. Oh, Jane. I'm right here, Mother. I failed you, Jane. I tried so hard, but now you'll be all alone. No one to protect you. I can't see you. It's so dark. It's night. Night. The night is far spent, the day's at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light.